Hi, let's go ahead and continue with the next section, 2.2 vectors in three dimensions. So this section will be um, kind of much more easier because we learned all that heavy vector terminology in section 2.1. Here we're just lifting a lot of the knowledge we have into another dimension, the third dimension. We have worked with two-dimensional rectangular coordinate plane. Now we will now work with three dimensions by adding the z-axis. Definition, three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system. The three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system consists of three perpendicular axes, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Because each axis is a number of line representing all real numbers in R, the three-dimensional system is often denoted as R for the little exponent of three to show us we're in R3, third dimension. So our next uh, line we're adding is z, and that one goes up and down. So we have our, our y-axis and our x-axis. Now we're adding our z-axis going up and down. So let me show you an image of what it would look to plot a point with an example. Sketch the point 1, 2, 3 in three-dimensional space. All right, <coughs> so here we have an image. It's from your textbook. We see that we would go on our x-axis to find one. We see here we have the one, and then the y-axis would find a negative two. So we have here negative two. <coughs> and from there, we expand to go up three, which would be our z-axis. So here we have three, and now we have this point right here. <coughs> In three-dimensional space, similar to coordinates, we have octants. I'm sorry, not coordinates, quadrants. Quadrants. So we have we would have before quadrants one, two, three, and four. Now we have octants. Octants divide the space into eight regions about the origin. So I have two images from your textbook. I like this one more because you can see where everything falls. You can see, also see when each quadrant um, has each coordinate as positive or negative. With that said, most of we have learned in two-dimensional coordinate plane, it also applies to the third dimension, but with slight modifications. So our next theorem, 2.2, is the distance between two points in space. This should look super familiar to you. It is exactly like your distance formula of two points, but now we're adding that z. So we're going to take the distance of two points from the z-coordinate. So an example is find the distance between two points. I trust you can do this on your own. Remember, um, well, it might sound silly, but even if I teach the lowest of the classes or the highest of the classes, I always label my points because I am a person to make those silly errors. So remember to label your points. So x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2. And that way you can appropriately use your formula above to find the distance formula. I'm sorry, just the distance. Writing equations in R3. Rule. Equation of planes parallel to coordinate planes. 1. The plane in space that is parallel to the xy plane and contains points a, b, and c can be presented with the equation z equals c. The plane in space that is parallel to the xz plane that contains the point a, b, and c that can be presented to by an equation is y equals b. And three, the plane in space that's parallel to the x, y, z plane that contains the point a, b, and c is represented by the equation x equals a. So notice that whatever plane you're working with, if you want, um, if you're looking for the equation of space that's parallel to it, it's always the space and the letter that space holds. 
So we have xy plane, we're missing z, so I have z and c. Next we have x z plane, we're missing y, so I have y equals b. And y z plane, so I have x equals a. <clears throat> Let's do an example. Write an equation of the plane passing through points 3, 11, and 7 that's parallel to y, z plane. All right, so I have y, z. You notice how we don't have x? So we're going to have x equals 3 as our plane that's parallel to y, z plane. So we just write x equals 3. B. Find the equation of the plane passing through the points 6, negative 2, 9, 0, negative 2, 4, and 1, negative 2, 3. So here we kind of see this in action. And we see that if it's working through these points, the plane that would work has that same point throughout. So we have x, y, z. We have y equals negative 2. Definition of a sphere. A sphere is a set of all points in the space equidistant from a fixed point. And the center of the sphere, just as the set of all points in the plane that are equidistant from the space, represents a circle. In a sphere, as in a circle, the distance from the center to a point of the sphere is called the radius. So similar definition to a circle, it's just now in third dimension, the same idea of Follows. We have a center and an endpoint, and the radius is the measurement of or the collection of points from the center to an endpoint. Rule Equation of a sphere. The sphere with center ABC and radius R can be represented by the equation x minus a squared plus y minus b squared and c minus c squared equals r squared. This, is, this equation is known as the standard equation of a sphere. An example, find the standard equation of a sphere with center 10, 7, 4, and a point negative 1, 3, negative 2, as shown in the picture. All right, so I have, if I have a point on a sphere, then it would have to be a hint to the radius. I have the center and I have a point along the sphere. And even though it looks like it's floating in between the sphere, if it's a point of the sphere, it's it's of a sphere. And it's an endpoint, right? It's some endpoint in our sphere. So we have some point. So we have some point and we have our center. Now, let's pull up our formula. Our center is a very specific point. It's x. It's a, b, c. And we have points, x, y, z. So if we use our formula that we have right here, we have x. So we have negative 1 minus a, which is 10 squared plus y, 3 minus b, which is 7, squared plus z, which is negative 2, minus c, 4 squared, equals r squared. This will help us find our radius. All right. So we want r, not r squared. So let's apply the square root to get rid of that squared. So let's use our calculator or partially use our brain. So we have negative 11 squared plus negative 4 squared plus negative 6 squared. Square root. All right, once we clean it up, we get the square root of 173. So that is R. So then we want the formula. So now we can use that center, that's so important. And just like your circle, we have x minus, so I have x minus 10 squared plus 
y minus 7 squared plus z minus 4 squared equals 173 because we want r squared. All right, and that is our equation of a circle, not circle, sphere. Next example, let P and Q, and suppose the line segment P and Q forms a diameter from the sphere. Find the equation of the sphere. All right, so I'm gonna write in two dimensions just so I can keep track of what I'm doing. So I know these two points create my diameter. So if I find the midpoint, that will help me find my center. Cool. Now if I have my center and an end point, just like before, I can go ahead and find my radius. All right, let's go ahead and do this. So we have a midpoint. Now, you know the midpoint formula for two dimensions. You add up your x's and your y's and divide them by two. We'll do the same thing. We'll add up our x's and our y's plus our z's and divide them by two. So for our x's, we have negative five plus three divided by two. For my y's, I have two plus four divided by two. And our z's, we have three plus negative one divided by two. So that gives us negative one, three, and one. That's our midpoint. This special midpoint is our center. So we now know that we have a center at negative one, three, and one. Now you can go about this just as before. You have a point along the sphere, whether P or Q, and you know the center. So lastly, you just need to find the radius. And you can do that just like we did in the past example. But I'll follow your textbook. Your textbook said, hmm, if I can find the distance of the radius, and if I divide it by 1 half, that will give me the measurement of the radius. All right, so let's find the distance of the diameter. And then we're going to divide it by two. That will give you your radius because your radius is your half of your diameter. So you have your radius is one half of the distance. Now our distance is found by a difference of our coordinates x, y, and z. So we have, we're gonna subtract our x's, our y's, and our z's. So I have negative five minus three squared plus two minus four squared plus three minus negative one squared. We clean this up and that's 64 plus four plus 16. So that gives us the square root of 21. So this will give us, that's our radius. So our formula, our answer we want, we need the center. So I have x minus one, so it's plus one. Our y, y minus three, squared, and z minus 1 squared is equal to 21. And there we found our equation of the sphere. Moving forward, working with vectors in R3. Just like two-dimensional vectors, three-dimensional vectors are quantities with both magnitude and direction, and they are represented by directed line segments, or arrows. So here you have an image of a vector. I included the image that you have just because it's kind of challenging to draw it without having like a perfect grid. So here we see that if we have two points. Our example is telling us that we have an initial point at 3, 12, 6, 
and a terminal point at four, negative 4, negative 3, and 2. So if we combine the, these two points and make a line segment with the ending and with the beginning and ending point, we have a vector. Just as before from our past section, we have properties of vectors. So this is how we can work with vectors. So we see that given any two vectors, I can multiply by a scalar, which is some constant number. I can add vectors. I can subtract vectors. I can find the magnitude of a vector and also a unit vector. Remember, unit vector has a measurement of one, a magnitude of one. So I trust you can do these examples that I have here. And that's it for today. So your homework for this one is 67 through 69 every other odd. And the reason I'm not going through these is because I know you can add and subtract and multiply. Um, for C, the trick to this one is you first have to multiply 5W. So your hint for this one is first find 5W. And then from there, once you have that number, that special vector, you can go ahead and find the magnitude of it. Versus here, you first find the magnitude and then multiply by 5. That's the difference between B and C. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, um, you can email me or post them in our general discussion board. Um, let's continue with section 2.3 of our text. Thanks.